Hi, I'm Jamie. And I'm Stacey. And this is the Body Smart Podcast. And today we have got the amazing Alyssa Corrigan with us today from El Sarash with the founder of this amazing company, which is the Hormone Balancing Supplement for Women. She's also been a journalist. She's run her own health retreats and she's even survived the Bear Grylls Island. So welcome, Alyssa. It's great to have you today. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, guys. It's a privilege. <laughs> yeah, we're really excited because um, we know we were saying before we've got so many things in common in terms of like our approach to health and fitness and just your way of approaching life in general and a startup business. So lots to dig into today. Um, but I know one of the things that we are big on at Body Smart is cutting the BS. So I did ask you yesterday, what is one thing that you really wish you could just cut the BS with for women and fitness and health in general? Okay, so there's two things that immediately sprung up and I thought, I mm, don't know which way to go with this, but they kind of go hand in hand with each other, so I'll mention them both. One of the biggest things for me is that weight training will make a female bulky. Mm -hmm. I feel like nothing could be further from the truth. Like women haven't got the testosterone levels. We haven't got the muscle mass. Um, I mean, I actually actively try and put on a lot of muscle and it takes forever. Like I'm trying, it does. Yeah, I'm, it really I'm, does. I'm trying to do pull-ups at the moment and I'm like so close to like mastering strict pull-ups. And for a female, you're in like the top like 3% of females around the world to be able to do that. Is it? it? Because we just haven't got the muscle mass. You haven't got the upper body strength. And it's crazy. So the fact that you know, I hear it in my mum's generation mainly, not necessarily mm -hmm. the younger generation, but you don't, they don't want to weight train or they're scared of weight train. And I understand why they probably find it a bit intimidating going into the gym, lifting weights. You know, there's loads of guys in there. You know, if they don't really know what they're doing, it'd be a little bit embarrassing. And, and there's a big social aspect to going to something like Zumba or like a aerobic cardio mm -hmm. class. Um, but the notion that you're going to get bulky is ridiculous. Like you, it's never going to happen. Your physique, when you actually start weight training, I mean, I am a true testament to it. I had a baby nine months ago now, and all I have done is walked 10,000 steps a day and weight trained three times a week. And I'm fitter now than I ever have been in my life, even pre-baby. Pre yeah. So, what do that, you do with your weight training? Like what's your regimen on the three times a week? Uh, yeah, so three times a week, try to do like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Mm -hmm. um, I do an upper body, a lower body, and a mixed. So if I'm in work and I can't get that third session in, at least I've done upper body and lower body. Mm. And then that mix is just like a full body. Yeah, full yeah. body workout, yeah. Um, so again, when I was getting back into it after um, I'd been pregnant, your core is like gone. Like I used to have quite a good core and I was, like my core was really good before I got pregnant. That's the one of the best advice I could give anybody actually is try and get physically fit before you get pregnant. If you're going to plan it, mm -hmm. get as physically fit as you possibly can do. It will so help you afterwards. Um, so I couldn't brace my core to do like heavy weights or anything like that. I've also like dislocated my kneecap so many times. So I have to be really careful um, when I'm doing any lower body, ex body exercises. Um, so I did loads of knee rehab, um, my range on like deadlifts and stuff mm -hmm. is just not there. Can't do glute bridges. The range is just not there. So there's loads of things I can do and not do, mm. but it's about adapting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, just start small, basically. You know, I use the cables, use machines, use dumbbells, you know. Everything. How did that journey look for you when you first started? Like, what did, like, when did you first even start lifting uh, weights? Okay. Um, so, like, I've always been never sporty in school whatsoever like none always a big girl I'm like a big girl you know I, I do not let her eat <laughs> so I'm naturally like bigger but then when I got to like end of university um I, I started weight training uh but more into like physical endurance as well so I did lots of marathons half marathons things like that um, and it's only recently that I've really, really fell in love with weight training as opposed to, cause now I'm so time poor with having the baby. I can't get babysitters. I can only get them like sporadically. So mm -hmm. I'm like, Oof. so if I have to commit to one thing, it's, it's that it's weight yeah. training. Yeah. So did you not train weights much before you were pregnant? N not really. Oh, okay. I, would, I would do nowhere near like I do now. Yeah. Like now it's like solely and I'm progressively overloading every single time yeah. I go oh, in. Nice. I've, you know, I set really big goals. You know, I want to be able to, like, deadlift, like, one and a half times my own body weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to be able to, like, pull at least three quarters of my own body weight. 
you know, I've looked at these markers and I thought, wow, I'd be very physically fit if I was in those areas. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going for now. Um, But my physique has completely changed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And you don't realise how strong a new mum has to be, you know, like. Carrying a baby, Car- carrying a shopper and opening the door. It's, yeah, it's like, crazy. Yeah. It's, yeah. And also, how strong your pinky finger can be. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, ooh, opening a door with one finger. It's yeah. absolutely crazy. Those car seats, like, yeah. weigh a ton. <laughs> Plus, then you put the baby inside yeah. it. She's she's 10 kilos herself, right, yeah. at the moment. Then you put her in the car seat. So that's when she's, like, 20. And I'm, I'm carrying it on the crook of my arm. And I'm thinking, my God, my forearm. Like, <laughs> yeah. Screaming but it, it, it's here. wild, like that's you know, 20 yeah. kilos, 45 pounds that you're lifting yeah. around. But then some women will go to the gym and pick up a five pounds or two kilo dumbbell, exactly. And it's, it, it just, yeah, it just doesn't make sense, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how did you find it? Because I know you had a cesarean, didn't you? Um, yeah, and you said just now, like your core was affected because you have to stay like in yeah. mobile effectively for six weeks. How did you find that having been so active before? Well, to be honest, she was born in October, the weather was absolutely dreadful oh. outside. I was like. <laughs> I'm staying in. I'm staying in. We're not going out. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So I just literally recovered at home. Didn't, you know, if any people wanted to come around, they had a look at the baby, but I wouldn't go far. Because yeah. um, I found it so hard. I yeah. didn't have a cesarean, but I had um, a pro- pelvic organ prolapse and I couldn't even walk like to the end of the road yeah. and it drove me potty. Yeah. I was like, I just want to go for a walk. <laughs> um, and not being able to like even lift, I couldn't lift him off the floor, let alone lift weights. Um, so I just wondered if like, you know, this has been a big part of your identity, being fit and looking a certain way and being active and having that enforced on you. Yeah. Did you find it took a toll? It, it did. But I just thought I, I looked really well in pregnancy. Even at like six months, I still had like abs. Mm-hmm. So I looked really well. I didn't really grow until like the end three months. Um, so I thought, you know what, just whatever. I, I just it was more important. And I'll tell you what happened, just like anxiety just took over. Yeah. Like my hormone levels was going wild. I'm not somebody who suffers with anxiety. I could never understand it when women used to tell me they had crippling anxiety to the point where they couldn't go out of the house. I was like, what? Like, what? What are yep. you so scared? I could never understood it. And then as soon as I had a baby, I was like, fuck, this is how <laughs> I feel. Like, my God, then I'm going to be a bit more sympathetic because... I just like, there was like danger, danger everywhere. It's like that part of my brain that like, and this is probably true. I have spoke to like a, a neuroscientist about this. Those parts of the brain that identify danger just go through the roof. Yeah. So I didn't want to go out the house, to be honest, especially I do a bit too much around the house, like trying to clean and I wouldn't notice it. If, mm-hmm. As soon as my painkillers wore off, I was like, fuck, I've definitely been doing too much. This is, this is one of these times where we can use, I, I think... Uh, statistically one of the hardest people to kill are new mums. <laughs> yeah. That's such a weird stat to know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's because you've got such a deep reason to live. Yeah. Like and your you, cortisol you know I mean? is like all the time. Yeah, yeah, you know, so you've just got that like <laughs> yeah. that that mother instinct of yeah. like look after the, the baby, yeah. the cub and just, you know, we, we have to put someone else before ourselves and it's yeah, I think it's um you're literally on high alert, aren't you? Just constantly. It's little things like where I'd put the pram. So I'd go to a restaurant or something or a cafe and then I would put a pram like there. And if it wasn't absolutely next to me, I'd start getting stressed out. And I was like, I've never been like this in my life. Mm-hmm. And I, I know, like, I'm chilled out about it now. You know, I wouldn't let anybody else hold her. I was like, no, sorry, go away. You know, the covered in germs and whatever. I was just like, no, perfume. Yeah. I was just like, go away. <laughs> Do you know biology what I mean? just takes over, doesn't it? It does, and I could not believe it. So now I'm so much more sympathetic. The only thing I can kind of relate it to is probably like going through the menopause. That's what it's probably going to be like. Your hormones are completely all over the place. I speak to loads of ladies, and they like they get terrible anxiety when they're driving. Mm. And if you stop driving, then you're losing your independence, and it must be awful. So yeah. you know, I'm thinking. So I'm since motherhood, I'm so much more compassionate. Yeah, I think that's a really good parallel, actually, because your hormones are doing this stuff that's biologically normal, but mm. to you feels so alien mm. and you can't control it. Yeah. So, yeah, just finding coping mechanisms so important. Yeah. But at least postnatal, you know, like there's a light at the end of the tunnel for most people. Like it's a phase. Yeah. And obviously perimenopause is a phase, but that's a change state, isn't it? Yeah. Then the afterwards. rest of your life. Yeah. yeah. So coming to terms with it and finding managing strategies mm. is super important. Um, so obviously body image has been a super important part of your life. And I did want to chat about something that you said in one of your podcasts, which was about like putting baby off because 
you love the way your body looks. Yeah. And, like it took a lot of effort to get there. And I was like, oh, I totally relate. <laughs> um, so I was like, I don't want to have kids. I'm quite happy with everything. Like I love my life. I love my relationship. I like my body. Um, and then I had a surprise baby. So I was like, yeah, oh, it's taking a little bit of adjustment <laughs> to get used to. Yeah. Um, so how did you find that shift of like having to bring the self-compassion of my body is going to change and it isn't going to feel the same after either? Yeah. So that was that was big for me. Yeah, definitely put off having children. Like, I'm th well, I was 37. I'm just turned 38 now. And um, well, one, I didn't want to have one with just anybody. So I was like, no, every every partner I'd had before the partner I'm with now, I was like, I'm not mixing my genes with you. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> stuck, good yeah. stuck with you for the rest of my <laughs> life in one way or the other. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, no. And then when I met Danny, um, he already had two children. So I was around his kids all the time. So I'd already, I was already doing the kid thing, but they mm -hmm. weren't mine. You know what I mean? So it was kind of a natural progression. We'd spoken about it and stuff like that. But, you know... Yes, we'd spoken about it, and if it happened, great, but we weren't, like, planning it. And, yeah, I've put it off for so long because I thought, oh, I know it's awful, and there's, like, a body-positive movement and everything like that, and I'm so pro that. But I think in reality for me, because I'd been a bigger girl growing up, all through my teens, all through uni, like, I can literally tell you, it must have had a big effect on me because I can tell you times, dates, locations, and what I was wearing when anybody's ever called me fat. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know wow. it like that. That's, that's yeah. huge, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I know. So for me, the thought of me putting on weight, yeah. even if it was for the greatest reason, was like, I just couldn't deal with it. And then you'd see all these amazing women on Instagram giving birth, and then they'd be like, yeah, well, this is my body now. And I'd be like, what? You know, like... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I know what you mean. Mm. Like this body acceptance thing of yeah. like, oh, tiger stripes are, yeah, are natural. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, they are. But I don't know that I can be that positive about it. Same. Mm. So, yeah, whatever. Call me shallow, call me superficial, whatever. Yeah. But I'd worked so hard, you know, for the last 10 years to really lose some, like, serious timber and get myself physically fit and, you know, amazing. I thought... Could, could you walk us through, like, what was your weight loss journey then? Like, where was your... Where was your starting point? And then you've said, because that's normally when we have like a lot of clients, they yeah. kind of hit that tipping point. It's it's very rare we speak to anyone and it's, they're just like, I just want to like genuinely just want to feel better or look yeah. better. It's normally like they're at a breaking point of like enough is enough or these insults or comments or how they just feel like themselves. They've almost hit like a little bit of a breaking point and it's normally a strong negative reason why that's driving them to take action. Yeah. And then over time you get almost like a little bit addicted to the feeling good, looking good, having more energy and then people want to sustain and maintain that, which has got a lot, a lot more like healthy drivers behind it, but it normally actually stems from a bit of a negative driver. Yeah, like what absolutely. So um, when I was growing up, I was never really, you know, I was big. I remember being about 10 and I mean, Everyone would kick off about this now. I actually think, well, whatever. So they weighed me in school. I wasn't horrendously big, by the way. And I'll show I could show you some pictures on this podcast of when people have called me fat. And by today's standards, I'm not at yeah. one bit. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so they weighed me in school and the teacher was like, Okay, so there's normal weight and there's yours. And it was like the one above it. And I was like, oh. You know what I mean? And I was and about, this is to a 10 year old. I was 10, yeah. I know this is big in America. It's, yeah. I, I, I didn't know it went on too much here, but yeah, that's. Yeah, it's so like, it was a really awful time, though, wasn't it, in terms of body image? I saw yeah. something come up on um, my feed the other day of like all these snips of like friends and mean girls and Britney on stage and all the shit that people said about mm -hmm. women's bodies in that era. Oh, yeah. It was just no wonder we all had complexes about it. And it was that super, super, super skinny, like yeah. anorexic, like Nicole Moss. Richie. Yeah. Do you remember like there's like Misha Barton, Nicole Richie, yeah. Rachel Zoe, all those ones. And they all like went skeletal. And I was like, oh my God, they look amazing. And do you remember that documentary with Louise Nerding about getting to size zero? No. Oh yeah. I rewatched it actually not long ago. Anyway, so that, I mean, that was it. <clears throat> it was everyone wanted to be a size zero and it was really cool to be a size zero. Yeah. That was like the in thing. Anyway, so... Yeah, so I was a little bit overweight when I was like in primary school. Anyway, so then, you know, you start going out, drinking, whatever. As you get older, like, well, I'd be quite young for me, 15, 16, whatever. Mm. I was just out of the house, didn't want to be in the house. So, yeah, out drinking, partying, get to uni, just gets worse. Um, 
drinking party, especially mm. in a place like Liverpool. Yeah. And like, I remember like two lads, I'm still friends with them now. Like one of them was like, well, you'd be all right if you'd lost a bit of weight. You know, these are like, <laughs> if I told them this now, <laughs> yeah. they would be like, I never said that to you. Do you reckon they don't remember? Yeah, of course they wouldn't. Oh no. Yeah. Well, just, I think like just young teenage yeah. people in general, men and women, I think we just all obliviously say yeah. stuff yeah. and not even realize like the yeah. impact of that, that could have on someone. Yeah. But it does really stick, doesn't it? Something like oh, that. Oh, in my head, because it was yeah. already something I was like conscious of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I got a little bit older and I remember being in the Hilton opening, right? I will show you a picture of me on that night. I am probably a, a, a big 10 at best, a size 10 at mm -hmm. best, right? Anyway, so I'm in the Hilton, it's opening night and I was a reporter back then. So I was like covering it and whatever, chatting to the owner, the owner's son and his mates. And he was like, yeah, so you're going to come on our boat in Greece in the summer? I said, yeah, yeah. And he was like, got to lose a bit of weight first, though. And I was like, stunned. Wow. Right? Yeah. Stunned. And I, I'm telling you now, I can remember times, dates, locations, and what I'm wearing at every single point. Of, like, and now, I mean, fucking hell. So this is what fuels me, because everybody thinks I'm, like, insane the way I carry on. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, not fit enough, not thin enough, not this, not that. And I'm like especially when I put stuff on Instagram, right? So when I was trying to lose weight after the baby and I was documenting it, a few women messaged me saying, you're triggering me. And I was like, well, I'm sorry, that's your issue, not mine. Mm -hmm. I, that's nothing to do with me. I'm trying to get strong again after having a baby and you've obviously got issues. And I said, and I'll tell you what, the saddest thing is, we're probably not very far away in our mentality. You've got mm -hmm. issues, I've got issues too, which yeah. is why I feel I've got to do this and why you're feeling triggered. You yeah, know. we've all we've all got our own demons. What do you feel like? Or do you feel like that is demons oh. that are driving you to take action and look a certain way with what you've just said? Or do you feel like there's because I can get a little bit like that sometimes. Sometimes like am I being driven by positive drivers or am I being driven by other negative drivers? Uh, especially when it comes to like business, you know, I can feel yeah. like oh, do I just want to keep growing a, a bigger business because I enjoy that, which I've more fell in love with, or is it just a consistent feeling of not being enough but, I <laughs> mean, I'm just, you know I'm like or am I blaring the lines a, li a little bit a little bit yeah. of both um yeah definitely uh it's probably is my Achilles heel again I remember a partner saying to me I we used to do a program called Desperate Scouse Wives and he, he oh, right. yeah, yeah I remember he, 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 <laughs> he said to me well yeah. you're the fat one out of the group right and I was like you're such a fucking dickhead right and then sorry for swearing and then um we were going on holiday and he was like, you need to get in the gym, you. Right. And I'm telling you now, I'll show you pictures of me then. Right. And you'll go, what? What is anybody mm. talking about? Yeah. I can't have been bigger than a, a, a 12 or yeah. a 10 at best. Anyway, so, and he superimposed my head on Josie Gibson's body in a bikini and said, that's what you're going to look like. Oh, yeah. And what? sent it to me on WhatsApp. I said, that's what you're going to look like if you don't go to the gym. I'm sure he meant it, trying to be funny, whatever. But again, saying something like that to me was yeah. like super hurtful. Mm -hmm. So, because that is my Achilles heel. So, yeah, yeah of course, it's a big driver. It's a yeah. driver of why I want to look the best, why I never feel like I'm in shape enough, or yeah, and like why I wanted to get back in my dresses as soon as possible. So, can you imagine when I, like, I got pregnant and all I'm thinking is, oh my God. I'm going to Your be the size of a change. house yeah. and it's never I'm never going to get that back. And the narrative is, oh, but you've grown a baby. I know. So like accept your body. No. And I'm like, mm. no. <laughs> no. But luckily, it's not it's not the case. No. <laughs> it's fine. No, you, you <laughs> can fine. you can, you know, I was really careful. You know, I wasn't like eating for two and eating what I wanted. And luckily yeah. I didn't get any cravings apart from ice. So that was great. So there no calories. So Your cravings for ice. ice. It's quite common, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't really know why. There's some science behind it, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. I, Low iron, apparently. Is it iron? Yeah. But there's no iron in ice. There isn't, but it's just what you crave. It's a bit mental. Right. Yeah. I had really low iron, actually, like to the point I could, I would just like, couldn't walk around a field. I yeah. had to like lie on the floor and just like take some breaths. But I never craved ice. But weird. Mm. So on your weight loss journey, like how much weight did you actually lose from probably like your heaviest to where you are, say, today? Let's say maximum two and a half stone. Okay, so what's that like? 35 pounds? Yeah, like 17 that. kilos? Yeah. 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 
So, you know, once you give up the booze and things like that, it's pretty easy. Then I started eating really well. And then I dropped, I mean, I'm 62 kilos today. Slimmest, I was probably 58. So mm -hmm. can you imagine another, what, like eight pounds off me yeah. now? I was mm -hmm. like, you know, but even then I thought I was fat. Yeah. yeah. Even then I was like looking at myself thinking I'm so fat. I don't, yeah. I don't think, <laughs> like, I, I don't, I mean, some of the people who I've spoken to who are in like well class shape absolutely like guys who are shredded or women who are in amazing shape i actually tend to find can actually be sometimes almost like the most insecure about how they look or mm. or at least like i've struggled with body dysmorphia over the years and yeah. I've, even now i can look back at photos of me in like early 20s and be like at that moment in time i did not feel the way of me now looking at the photo feels yeah. about it i'm like wow i was in like absolutely fantastic shape but at the time i'm like could be a bit leaner yeah. Could have a slightly bigger chest and it could be this, could be that. And it's 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 just weird. Your mind that does play games on you and you're at least myself, I was just overly self critical of everything. Um, but I'm not like okay, so for you, you've managed to build an amazing business off the back of this, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, like you it's not a bad thing. I actually don't think it's a bad thing to sometimes have a bit of discipline, have a bit of motivation, whatever it might be, whether it be mm -hmm. negative which come from a negative space. You know, I mean, you look at Goggins and my, my he's like, you know, he he like absolutely bullies himself in the mirror and shouts at himself to the point where, but look at him, like he's absolutely yeah, he's super an, he's human. He's inspired, you know, millions and millions of people, and I, I do I do think that he's got these demons that are driving him. Yeah. I think he actually reads all his haters' comments he out does. into his uh, <laughs> into a voice recorder and he plays <laughs> that while he's running. So you know, like he's just completely fueled by like hate and drive. Yeah. And it, but you know, he's got um. <laughs> so we always have this debate about like coaching clients because I'm like positive psychology, like turn it into the positive. And Jamie's like, lean into the pain points. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can but, use both, you know Yeah, I mean? yeah. different yeah. people need different things. Because yeah. if someone says stuff like, like that to me, I'm like, okay, then I'll quit. Yeah. Okay, I'm, so... I'm a quitter. If someone's mean to me or talks me down or says anything, I'm like, okay, you're right. I'm not going to do that. I'm yeah. like... 20% carrot and 80% stick. Oh, I'm like the yeah. other way. If anybody gives, if anybody even like gets a stick out of a cupboard, I'm, I'm out. I'm not playing this yeah. game. No, I really respond to like aggressive, yeah. like that, fucking lazy cow. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that tends to typically be more a better drivers for men, but not always. And yeah. like we have with our coaching, we used to call it like chameleon coaching. So the coach has to wear the you know has to be the chameleon for that person so some people are going to need yeah. that like kick in the dick like get your shit yeah. together and other people like if you if they just would not respond to that so it's like finding that yeah. level of communication that's gonna get people to respond the best ultimately because you, you're still trying to achieve the same outcome with everyone yeah um, it's just like obviously how you go about it and having that well that's the thing so like for me and my pc knows that like he's like you know a lot of the time, you know, if you don't do that last rep, you, a lot of PTs would be like, it's all right, you did your best, it's all right. Now that was, you know, if, yeah, I, did, a if I set a goal yeah. and I don't hit it, I just wouldn't well, even want to like know myself, honestly. So it could be like a work goal. It could be like how much revenue we want to do, how many subscribers we want, whatever. But if we do not hit that or I don't win an award I'm up for, like, just don't talk. Do you know what I mean? I'll be like furious. I'd yeah. be furious. Have you have you grown up in like a competitive environment? No, not really. No. It's all self like <laughs> and because I was never pushed really, kind of left to my own devices, a real dream but Nobody expected anything from me, teachers included, you know. Um my dad was one of the best for me, but mm. yeah, it's it's all come from I think feeling not good enough at school. I went to a very good school. Everyone was super clever. I was probably middle of the pack. You know what I mean? Maths, bottom of the set, bottom, bottom of the pack. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But stuff like English and stuff like that. Um, so I always felt like, yeah, that I wasn't quite good enough. Yeah. But now I'm like, no, I can, I can push myself. You know, to be better than anyone, really. You know, there'd, there'd be no one who like drives himself more than me. Mm -hmm. I think um, that's the cool thing. If you've achieved one thing and you've proven to yourself, do you know what? I am good enough. Yeah. It's a bit addictive, isn't it? Because yeah. then you're like, if I can do it there, I can do it here, and I can do it here, and I can do it anywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. Creates that self belief. Sorry to interrupt. If you are enjoying today's chat, then please do follow or subscribe on your podcast provider to make sure that you don't miss out on any of our episodes and to help keep us bringing new content to you. Uh, did you have like a. So has there been a turning point then you said like that I wasn't always this way. Can you remember like a pivotal point of like when that first started happening? You know what? Um, 
So the, I'll tell you how I really got into nutrition. And it was because I was iron deficient. I remember I used to go to this one place on the docks all the time. I used to get the same breakfast every day, pretty much. And I'd just, I'd just like try to lose loads of weight. So it was cutouts, things like orange juice, I'd like hardly any vitamin C in my diet or anything. I was not eating red meat at the time. So it was just like eating like fish and eggs, everything. Anyway, and I had the copper coil in at the time. And I was losing so much blood mm. that I became anemic. Anyway, I didn't know it at the time, but I was in this um, restaurant. I used to get spinach every morning and I would salivate at the sight of the spinach even arriving to my table. Like it would be incontrollable. I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. <laughs> and then when I got Don't think my... I've ever heard anyone say that before. No. But yeah. Then I yeah. was eating ice like it was going out of fashion. Yeah. So I went to go and somebody diagnosed me on Twitter and they said, you should go and get your iron levels tested. So I did. And they were like, yeah, you're B12 and you're iron deficiency, you're anemic. So we can sort it out pretty easy, but you need to start eating red meat, eating some, like having some vitamin C, stuff like that. So I was like, okay, great. But my body knew what I wanted before I knew what I needed. And mm. I was like, that is incredible. So yeah. when it, that just was like, when you have a craving for something, your body's asking for a nutrient. And that then opened up a world of like, wow. So I really got into like health, nutrition, really into nutrition after that. Mm -hmm. Off the back of that, I started writing a lot about health retreats um, in national newspapers. So I got invited to loads. And when I was there, they were all the same. There were these like towy, you know, celebrity filled boot camps with. We should uh, explain towy for anyone. All oh, right, yeah. No, it doesn't know. <laughs> so the only way is Essex is like yeah. a reality show. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was uh, yeah, full of like celebrities or mm. like, you know, EastEnders stars, whatever, these boot camps. And you get invited along. But it was always like ex-Marines making you do like a thousand burpees in a field. And they would starve you on like six, seven hundred, eight hundred calories a day. They'd weigh you at the beginning, they'd weigh you at the end. Oh, there you go. You've lost five, six pounds. And people would pay a thousand, two thousand, three thousand pounds for this week. Which and we was, all know that is not going to last. Of course it's yeah, not going to last. <laughs> and they would straight into Mackey's as soon as they left. Yeah, but yeah. I was just like, this is a nonsense. And plus, most of the women there were like 50s. You know, they wanted to lose weight, turn up. Yeah. Mm. They'd been on diets all their life. This was the thing. They were just lazy, like this Marines telling them in the yeah. field, you know, fat and lazy. Stop eating, you know. Stop eating shy, do yeah, more yeah, push-ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. yeah that's, 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 no, I'm mean, laughing yeah, yeah. because I'm married to one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, yeah. he's spent like the first four years of our relationship saying, just eat less and move more. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, you're full of shit. Oh, my metabolism's broken. Yeah. I need to drink apple cider vinegar. Uh, and now I'm like, mm. You actually might have had a point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but no one was really like talking to any of these women about hormonal health. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it better. So I set up my own retreat and it was, we spent more time in the classroom, you know, than we probably did in the field outside. Yes, we did workouts. But they're all hit workouts. We do a lot of Pilates and stretching. These are older women, you know, they can't be like, Jump, the joints are hurting, you know what I mean? They're aching, they're going through the menopause, they don't know what's wrong with them. We were the only ones who used to sit down and explain it to them. So we'd spend loads of time in a classroom as well. As, so we do cooking lessons and everything. And that's why we're so successful because they'd go away feeling unreal after a week instead of like, fuck, I need to get into Mackey straight yeah. away. And, tons and empowered of education. as well. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. So the only reason I stopped that business was COVID. Mm. You know, I was like, God, what am I going to do? We had loads of... So was that your main thing at that yeah, point? Yeah. yeah, that was my main business. It's called the Life Laboratory. I had a great team. And then um, COVID hit and I had to like refund everybody. I was like seeing these thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds going out of the account. I was like, what am I going to do? Like, <laughs> what yeah. am I going it's to do? It is devastating. It was a devastating yeah. time for so many businesses yeah. and small businesses. Yeah. So, um, but then it was one, like a couple of weeks later, one of my clients said what can I do for libido? And I said, take this, this, and this. And I was like, Matt, you'd be the last person on the planet, I would think, would ask me about libido. So if she's thinking about that, it must be a bigger issue. So I started thinking about this, and then I was like, looking at this concoction I put together, I tried it myself, oh, this is very good. And you know, that's, that's where this business was born. Then I started looking at Google data, and realizing how much this was getting Googled, sexless marriages, low libido women um yeah, yeah like everything like menopausal symptoms so i realized it was a bigger issue than everyone was talking about 
Um, and no one was talking about it back then. Not really so much now, more so now, but not back then. That was like nearly three years ago now. So I thought, well, I've got nothing better to do. <laughs> got a bounce back loan. Yeah. <laughs> I just went all in, just went all the chips in on this one golden pill, that product. Which isn't just for libido. I think it's not, oh no, no. explaining yeah. to the yeah. listeners, you know, it's for, well, you sell it better than I will. Okay. Yeah, so um, essentially it was a hormonal balancing pill that I wanted to create because one of the symptoms of your hormones going out of whack is uh, low libido. And, you know, most of my clientele at that time were menopausal women mm -hmm. and I couldn't help them physically or in person anymore. Um, but I thought, well, uh, maybe I create a product for them because I don't know how long COVID's going to go on for. So put together, um, looked at clinical data, worked with a team to put this concoction together, especially the dosages. And that's something really worth picking up on because while there might be a lot of companies that use similar ingredients to us, they do not use it in anywhere near the doses that you would need to make it effective. So that was really important to me. I couldn't go all in on everything and my whole mm -hmm. reputation if I knew this was not good. If, if I was just putting crap in a bag and selling it. So I had to make sure it worked. Um, so I got loads of people to trial it. They loved it. And the one ingredient that I put in, which was for libido, um, so in clinical trials, they'd given it to women with sexual dysfunction in menopausal sexual dysfunction and in the same doses that we use in. And after 90 days, 87% of them said their sex life had gone up. 92% of them said they were more aroused. The vaginal dryness had gone. All these things, mm. like all the metrics were amazing. So I was like, right, I rang up the manufacturer. I said, can you get me this ingredient? He said, yes. He said, but well, are you giving this to women? And I was like, yeah. He's like, we only ever put that in a man's product. So I was like, so what? Like, what's well, so what? Like, why mm. not? Women need a libido too. And he was like, oh, well, usually, you know, it's usually in some like gym ed stack, basically. A little testosterone booster. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. like that. But um, so I was the first one to put it in like a women's products, but it's amazing. It's called Tribulus, that ingredient. It's mega. I love it. And I, I'm not menopausal, but I take this product every single day religiously. And I'm telling you now, it's like the difference. I can get like an extra 10, 20% out of myself in the gym, like lifting in the gym. Like big notice it big time if I haven't taken it. And then I go and do a, a circuit. Like literally it would be the difference between four kilos. Mm -hmm. I did like 38.6, like by the, <laughs> I measure everything, kilogram pull the other day when I wasn't on it. And then when I was on it, a 41. You know what I mean? Big difference. Yeah. yeah. So, so percentage wise for sure. Yeah. Is this just yeah. because you're seeing what like nutritional deficiencies and then that's impacting people's hormones and that's, Having just an issue, like I say all the time on all these podcasts that like hormones rule the world, you know. Absolutely. They have a huge impact on how we think and feel, but then ultimately how we behave as well. Um, Every, it's yeah. absolutely the biggest driver of your behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the difference between if you want to kill somebody or not. It's literally like, <laughs> it is yeah. that, you know what yeah. I mean? So, um, yeah, it's the difference between whether you can lean, first female as well. And this is why I'm always like kind of like dead against the pill. Because I'm like, you're like chemically castrating yourself like every day. And if your estrogen is higher, which if you're taking that every day or you're taking progesterone, whatever, you're not going to be able to lean into those hard situations as much as if you're just on an even level. Um, a higher you mentioned before you took, you still have the coil, right? Yeah. I had right. the non-hormonal. Yeah, the, non, right. the copper okay. coil. Yeah. yeah. Which the side effect of that is you bleed loads. Mm -hmm. So I was on for like two weeks. I was losing too much blood. Um, it yeah, is. Yeah, and that played into part of the uh, oh, anemia. Oh, 100%. Anemia. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, if you're going to have a difficult conversation in work, you should do it when you're most fertile because that's when your testosterone's the highest. If you want to go and lift your best, you can in the gym. And that's often because at that time, testosterone's highest yeah. and you're less agreeable. And women tend to Absolutely, be yeah. more agreeable when testosterone's lower. Yeah. So, yeah, having those harder conversations is. Yeah. advised at those times so it's just it's working in alignment with your cycle isn't it well exactly and like yeah. what you said like it's just you've got to track your cycle yeah, yeah. it's it, and really harness your hormones and then you know right okay i'll tell you what i'm gonna feel a bit teary or a bit aggy then you know i'm gonna be a real rat bag at that point mm. add in other things like um you haven't had a great sleep if i yeah. haven't had a great sleep my appetite goes through the roof the day after mm -hmm. like through the roof like if you know, if 
I've had like four hours sleep because I've been up with the baby or something like that, I'm just starving all day. You know what I mean? And it's like, there's so many other factors. Um, again, that can have a huge impact on uh, your sex hormones, libido, things like that too. Actually, yeah, I um, read a really good study the other day, which was one extra hour of sleep gave a 20% increase in a woman's libido. I saw that with yeah. Matthew Walker. I was yeah. like, Reese, yeah. uh, I need a lion this morning. Here's a good incentive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's yeah. true. Yeah. And women are more susceptible to hormonal imbalances. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so a product like ours is amazing for uh, hormonal balancing. Um, there's stuff in there like Siberian ginseng. We've got maca in there, tribulus, uh, ginkgo, and beetroot extract. Um, yeah, so in the beginning, we kind of like marketed it as a bit of a libido, you know, enhancement because that's what got pressed. That's mm -hmm. what got this business going. But actually, you know, the ones you want to take it just want to feel like normal again. And they do. Our Trust Pilot reviews are insane. And people don't just write great products. They yeah. write like an essay of like what they were feeling like, who they are, their lifestyle how their relationships change, like you've saved my marriage. I feel like my husband feels like I'm the 20 year old he'd married again. And oh, all, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's amazing. And that's why we do it. Um, and that's why, you know, I was so confident at going all in, you know, and then I thought, well, whatever, 50 grand. If I lose it, I lose it, you know yeah. what I mean? You know, what, what else am I doing, you know, at that time? But no, I'm really proud of the work that we do. I'm really proud of the product. I'm still really proud of it today, you know, you learn a lot, don't you, in three years, but I still stand by the formula that I put together then. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I've been on a big journey with it ever since. And I know when we were chatting before, um, one of the things you said about the industry is really frustrating is this perception that supplements are all a bit of a like, yeah. woo-woo thing, like they don't really work. Yeah. Um, so you must come up with that all the time. Of course, they go, yeah, well, you can just get everything from your diet. I was like, when was the last time you were up the Peruvian Andes <laughs> eating maca? Never. So you can't, can you? Especially yeah. with like herbal yeah. adaptogens. Yeah. You, you can't get them in your everyday diet. Yeah. Or something as, as obvious as like vitamin D. Like yeah. no one in, yeah. the, in, in the UK is getting sufficient vi uh, yeah. vitamin D levels without supplementing it. So, yeah. you know, yeah, like there's a... And then it's like the quality of the soil and the quality of the food nowadays. We're getting nowhere near as much nutrients as we used to even getting whole food. So, yeah. you know, like supplementing to an extent is becoming an, an essential part of health. Yeah. Um, and getting your, your health markers in the, yeah. you know, the healthiest and the most optimal place. But then one of the things we always talk about with clients is, you know, that pyramid of the basics. So getting, if you're eating all convenience foods and like not exercising, not drinking enough water, I mean, those might help but actually get the basics oh, in get place the big first. Rocks. Yeah, get the big rocks in place because they're going to have the biggest impact. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, We do that. We do like a hormone pyramid and I'm like, okay, here is your lifestyle at the bottom. This is diet. This is sleep. This is, you know, your stress level. This is, you know, uh, your exercise level. Mm -hmm. Those are the biggies. Then it's kind of like the next tier. You know, what are you doing to relax? Are you doing any stretching? Blah, blah, blah. And then absolutely supplements is on the top. Are you mm -hmm. nailing all that? You know, and I, I probably turn away loads of clients. I actually do turn away loads of clients. I'm like, this is not a flash in the pan. I'd rather you be a quality customer than you go, I've had it for a month, I don't like it. Yeah. You know, because this and is... And actually, you're not giving it the best chance to shine no, if you're not you've doing got... all those other things as no. well. No, for the best efficacy, you need to run it three months plus. Um, you know, we had a woman who gave us an amazing trust pilot, and she was like, I've been on this for seven months. And I was just about to give it in. And my God, I am like a different woman. She's like, I am so glad I didn't jack it in. She said, I was feeling good, but I wasn't getting the like same results as the women on the reviews. And the longer she went with it, and she just, she's like, I'll never mm -hmm. stop taking this now. So yeah, so I think a lot of people have this perception that you can get everything from a diet. Not really true. Um, like you said, yeah, mismanaging farming. The soils just haven't got the nutrients in them, so therefore mm -hmm. the produce can't have it in them. Magnesium, most people are de de deficient yep. in. So it's a good insurance policy to take a magnesium. Omega-3 as well, most people are deficient in that, and that is an essential long-chain fatty acid. You really need that. Essential, it's clue in the title, you need that, and your body can't make it. You have to consume that. So it, it's it's good to get a good clean version of that, and I'm not talking cod liver oil. I'm talking like a mega. Yeah, we spoke about this. Yeah. I mean, there's just <laughs> nowhere near enough in cod liver oil no. compared to what a lot of people do take it, especially in the UK. 
Um, yeah. It's like the, the seven seas. The seven seas yeah. one. And it's just, there's no way now enough in there. No. And then <laughs> I always see like Omega 6 and 9 as well. Omega 3, 6 and 9. I'm just like, you get so much Omega 6 from every other food you eat. You just really don't need to supplement it. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same with 9. Um, but Omega 3 you know, is an anti-inflammatory as well, so. Yeah, um, and I think a lot of people don't understand it's actually the ratio that's quite important. It's oh, yeah. It's not just, oh, more omega-6, great. You, If you're then counteracting your ratio with your omega-3s, yeah. you're kind of undoing the good work, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not going to, like, bastardize this, like, conversation about omega-3. I know, I know a little <laughs> bit about it, but there's experts who you should speak to about yeah. this stuff. But, yeah, it's, it's a biggie for me. Um, yeah, me too. The other thing... Um, that's a biggie. So we get, I don't know if you guys get this a lot, we get loads of questions about hair loss. Mm, not so and, much. Um, they always ask me, like, they'll send me products that say, is this any good? And it'll be like hair burst gummies. And I'm like dead against any form of gummy. I mean, unless you really, you can't swallow a pill or something. What about but, gummy bears? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, go, no, I like them. You know gummy I mean? bears are awesome, yeah. but they're not pretending to be anything. But yeah, yeah. a gummy is essentially a gummy yeah. bear, you know what I mean? It, like, you have to go way down the list of ingredients to find mm-hmm. anything yeah. that might be nutritionally benefiting it. Um, and when they do testing on gummies, like the ingredients in it just like evaporate out of that material, you know what I mean? So you can't regulate the dosage in a gummy so i just think they're a waste of time capsules powders liquids are the only way to go really um so uh hair loss okay so we get loads of questions about hair loss what can i have for hair loss and i'm like again you need to start with your great foundations and hair loss is like it's like a deficiency or your, your central nervous system isn't being supported so I would actually, instead of used buying something that says hair loss on it, you'd be better off getting like B vitamins, magnesium, mm-hmm. omega-3. Support your foundations of your central nervous system first. Only then will your hair, you know, start getting nutrients to your follicles. Yep. You even get enough uh, protein. Like we've literally had some clients yeah. who have been a vegan or vegetarian, yeah. barely get enough protein in the diet. Mm. And they've got like brittle nails, yeah. thin hair, mm. um, and literally like a couple of months of just eating a slightly, like a, a more a better uh, protein diet in terms of just like more optimal for them yeah. and like instantly thicker hair, thicker nails. Everything, yeah. yeah. And, and do you know what else it really commonly is with our clients? They've been on like 1,200 calories for however long. Yeah. And they just haven't get enough of anything. Yeah. And then when we start saying, do you know what, maybe move a bit more so you can eat a bit more and be more nourished, then all of a sudden their nails are good, the mm. hair's good, the skin's good because they're actually eating enough food. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's, one. you know, 1,200 calories, even like, even like 2,000 calories, but like 1,200 calories, 1,500 calories, like you, you'd have to have like the perfectly nutritionally balanced meals yeah. to be getting just enough yeah. nutrients yeah. and, you know, healthy fats and everything from that, you know, amount of food. And people go lower than that too. And it's like, of course, you're going to start not yeah. feeling your best. Like yeah, you think of, of the, the complete lack of nutrients. And this is another reason why, why you see it in women more than men in terms of nutrition deficiencies is because women you know, have less calories to, to spend on a day-to-day basis than, than men. So men, even if they were eating the same diet as a woman because they get to eat a larger quantity, they're getting more overall vitamins and minerals. Yeah, and I also think, coming back to that, like, body image pressure that we were talking about earlier, we've got a lower baseline for maintenance anyway, women generally than men. But we also, most of us, have spent a long period of our lives trying to eat even less than that because of this bullshit of should be skinny should fit into these clothes um and so you've done that cyclically for all your 20s maybe all your 30s maybe all your 40s your body's never actually had that baseline of just being well nourished yeah no it's it has a has a huge impact a lot of women that we first coach have like lost a period like they've not had a period period in in years and it's like you sometimes will actually will have them in a deficit but we'll get them moving more eating more but their period comes back and it's like the first time they've had a period in a couple of years. And it's just like, there's a lot of... Or really irregular periods is really common. Yeah, which yeah. is um, which is wild. It's like it, your body is telling you, as you said before, like are, you're... Yeah, are these like at, really underweight women? No, no. No, no. and that's, that's like actually, yeah. yeah. So these could be women who are 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight and are having irregular periods or... But they're like, they're chronically starving themselves, which you could look at and be like, how are they doing after 50 pounds overweight? But it's just that yo-yo of on a diet like mm. massively restricted and then huge binge they tend to typically gain more weight and then they'll lose weight yeah. again or try to lose weight again and it's just this yeah. consistent cycle but 
it's just high stress, like permanently for them. And like, if you think about what they're actually giving their bodies, usually it's like trying to be good. So like eating 1200 calories a day for like two weeks of like poached eggs and all the good things. But then it's all bets are off and it's just convenience food. All the things that they haven't been allowing themselves for those two weeks are then 100% all they eat for like the next four weeks. And so, yes, they are on a diet, but it's not usually as long of a period as they're off the diet. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, just a quick ask. We are looking to help and serve as many people as possible and get the Body Smart message out there. So what we would ask is you give this podcast a follow or subscribe wherever you're listening or watching to. It, it, I don't know, it is a struggle, isn't it? And there's temptation everywhere you go. Yeah. You know, so if you are more susceptible and you haven't got that willpower, then, you know, or that discipline and you haven't found the motivation, if you mm. haven't found your why, I know you go through that with your clients before you start and yeah. you make them find like a really trigger. Mm. You almost need to find that trigger, don't you? Of like, well, what what's the reason you're doing this for? Maybe it's spend more time with your kids or whatever um a big thing we talk about is like setting people's environment up for mm. success is there anything that you do on a regular basis that sets your environment up for success whether that's yeah. where you go to the gym how your house is how your office is like is, is there certain things you do on a day-to-day -day basis that are like a, a non-negotiable that make it easier to stay on course i mean my whole life is set up for success in, <laughs> in that way it's like yeah. i do not buy anything that would be considered like treats or anything like that you know my fridge is like almost bare there's just loads of San Pellegrino, loads of like eggs, uh, peppers, carrots, courgettes, things like that, you know, avocados. The baby eats exactly what I eat. Um, Farg yogurts, love them. Like, must go through them, one of them yeah. a day. That's like an elite level snack, isn't it? It's amazing. Um, so my whole house is there's no alcohol in my house. So with the nutrition side of things, like very, I guess how people would say, very like clean in terms yeah. of how we eat. Have you always eaten like that? Um, I would, I would, I would say since I've been in the, when I got anemic, which was probably, I would say, mm, was I about 23, something mm -hmm. like 24, I would say since then, that okay. was when I really got into nutrition. And the first book I bought was Eat Nourish Glow by Amelia Freer. And I read it cover to cover and I was like, my God, this is amazing. And then that was it. I read so many books on nutrition, mm -hmm. gut health, you know, everything. And then. I started knocking about with people who were, you know, like heavyweights in the nutrition world. And they, I taught, like they, they taught me so much and, you know, I really got into supplements and things like that. So yeah, then, then that, that just became, I was just genuinely interested in that. Mm -hmm. This wasn't how I was making money. This was what I was doing in, in like my, my spare downtime. This is what yeah. I was seriously interested in. Um, and I always thought, oh God, if I was ever to go back to uni, like I've got a degree in English and history and one in journalism. And if I was ever to go back to uni, I would do something in the nutritional space. Um, but then I thought, well, what's the point? You can learn loads of stuff on YouTube and, you know. Mm. Um, but it's, uh, yes, yeah, so it is a genuine passion of mine. So setting myself up to success, the gym I go to is the closest gym to my house. Mm -hmm. It's also one of the most expensive in the city, if not the most expensive. But for somebody who's like, doesn't drink, doesn't go out, whatever, and if that's where I want to spend my disposable income, then... Then I will do because that's what I get. Yeah, you don't need to justify it. Yeah, that, that's what I get my kicks <laughs> yeah, at. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I have to justify it, you know. But um, but for me, like I'm at that level where I want to be pushed and pushed and pushed because I've done the basics. Mm -hmm. You know, I live my life amazingly. You know, it, you know, we're not talking about somebody who needs to like, well, just stop eating pizza. You know, I'm like trying to chew, finally tune myself now. So I need somebody who's going to give me their full attention for sixty minutes. Like I walk in that gym. There's no phones anywhere. He doesn't take his eyes off me for 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And he's like pushing me and pushing me and pushing me as hard as I, he doesn't have my number. I don't have his, you know, we're not friends, mm -hmm. but just like, yeah. it's like, we know I, I'm employing you to do a job and that is to push me as hard as I can be. Outside of this gym, I don't care about your life and you don't care, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's like as clinical as that sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's the kind of training I like. I'm not there for rent a friend. Um, so that's the gym I go to. Yeah, um, I try and have my gym stuff ready the night before, so mm. that I have to put it on, get it ready. But yeah, setting your house up for success and your environment is incredibly um, important. And the other thing is, which is probably the biggest thing, is it's it's the people the closest close around yeah, you. Yeah, your yeah. influence. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that circle around you. If your partner isn't on board, so say yeah. you get a client and 
you know, they're like, right, I want to change my life. I want to lose three stone, whatever it may be. And they're going through your program. But yeah, the kids are like not on board with it. Their partner is not on board with it. They're just constant. She's going to be fighting against mm -hmm. that all the time. You know, she might be, you know, you know, chicken and and eggs and sweet potato and they're ordering pizzas. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're pulling their back all the time. And unfortunately, you can't get rid of them. But you, <laughs> you need to. Well, yeah, yeah. There's always but, a choice. Yeah. But, that, but that's the thing. It's yeah. like yeah. then you need to find your tribe, don't you? You need Indeed. to actually expose yourself to people who, you know, you need to find find friends who are going to live their life like you. So, um, so that, like, I would say, your nutrition and training is probably quite extreme to most people, <laughs> which is like like yeah. I'm all about that as well. Um, is there parts of where that's been like a detriment to parts of your life because? Definitely something that we know is like we have a huge like sub course on it, which is like saying the all or nothing mentality. And a lot of the women we work with are high achievers and having a all or nothing mentality, whether that's getting an A star in school, getting one hundred percent on a test, showing up the best in work, and and you know smashing the stuff out of the park. That that mindset has served them and yeah. all these other areas of life. And but then they still can't figure out the health and fitness piece, and they've got that mindset around. Well, I need to be 100% all the time. And I always say like, hey, like if you were doing a 30-day challenge, you could commit to do the 20,000 steps a day, drink all the water, eat all the protein, eat all the healthy meals. And people do it for, for 30 days. And then just like you said, um, you're like after a retreat, go to Mackey's, yeah. drink, eat 5,000 calories for three days straight, gain like 15 pounds in a couple of days. And they're like, what the hell? And it's, you know, they've had that, like they just needed like a relief or a break from it because they've just been so all in. But then- you know, the natural ebbs and flows in life. And you we all have this, but definitely when you have kids, mm -hmm. um, things can't be a hundred percent all the time. They can't be perfect. So like, is that, does that affect you? Like how does that sh show up in your life? Has, has there been sacrifices you've got to make? Yeah, of course. I mean, sometimes it's like, we'll take the kids to a play area or look at the menu and I'm like, oh, it's just nothing I'm going to eat on this menu. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing I want to eat here. Um, but I have to either get over it or don't eat until later on and get, you know, get something later. I, I've got to a stage in my life where I don't care if I'm antisocial, unfortunately. Actually, I used to be like a real extrovert and the older I've got, I've become more introverted. And I just find like, I'm not really interested in going, if I'm around people who are drinking, I'm bored of their conversation after like three drinks. And I'm like, well, this is probably because they've said the same story. Yeah, and I'm just so. like, <laughs> this is not for me. I'm yeah. gonna go see you later guys. Um, yeah. You know, and that's difficult because yeah, everyone just thinks I'm miserable or whatever, or it's just like, I haven't got much in common with them mm -hmm. sometimes. So that I find that difficult. Um, so again, it's about finding your tribe. A lot of my friends are like, oh, come on, let's go out for you know dinner. And I'm like, no, can we not? Because I know what's going to happen. You're all going to end up drinking, blah, blah, blah. You're all going to be pissed. It's just going to be pointless for me. I'll hate it. So now I'm, I just put my foot down. I'm like, if you want to spend time together, we're going for breakfast or brunch. Because mm -hmm. then I can eat something that I want. I can get like eggs and avo. <laughs> and I'm like, let's go to a gym class. So yeah. a couple of times I'll go, let's, let's go to Barry's. And then I'll take you out for brunch afterwards. And that's like my perfect catching up with mm -hmm. with with my friends. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. I've, I've, I've definitely found that as I'm, yeah. especially over the past couple of years, instead of just every time I go out with friends, it's a big night out and drinking and just feeling awful. Now it's being like going for a walk or going to the gym yeah. together or going for a coffee or, you know, and it's, um, I feel a, a hell of a lot better for doing that. And you still get that social element that you yeah. were kind of craving, I guess, a little bit from going out and spending that time with them. But yeah. it's such a cultural thing in, in the UK to just drink till you get absolutely shit faced. And it's <laughs> well, just, uh, exactly. <laughs> and then, you know, I'll feel like my partner will be like, come on, just have a drink. Everyone's having one. I'll get you one. And I'm like, I really don't want to. You know what I mean? I'm like, mm. well, if I'm not actually going to get paralytic, which is, I've only got like two speeds. So, and mm. I hate having a hangover. So I just don't drink anything. But yeah, I'm just like, what's the point? Because it's like 300 calories for nothing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm like, yeah. well, might as well have sparkling water. I think um, especially since having Nate, I found as well, it doesn't taste as good when you know the payback is going to be so bad. Yeah, so know. my desire to drink is like through the floor now. It's like a nice glass, glass of wine. I'll have one. And then the second one, I'm like, you know what? I don't even want it. Yeah. Like, it doesn't taste as good as I know that the consequences are gonna feel. Yeah. So I think once you've got that space where you know how feeling good feels and then you know you can choose, 
it's actually an easier choice, isn't it? The other thing is, I mean, take the baby out of the equation. I couldn't even imagine having a hangover with her now because like, like dealing with that, I'd just be awful. But I've actually got something that I care about. Like my business is going great and I've got one fucking opportunity here to make this into something that will sustain me for the rest of my life. And I've got that. So if I'm not going to mess that up by going to get pissed with a load of people who do not want to do that or haven't got anything in their life that they're super passionate about. So I've got one opportunity to get this right. And I might only have a lifespan of like, let's say the next five years before a million other products come on the market just mm -hmm. like this. I'm not going to lose time and weeks just like going to the pub again in Liverpool, doing the same thing with the same people because they'll all be there in five years' time. You know, yeah. I might have a renaissance when I'm 45 and go like, <laughs> fuck it, I'm right, I'm free. I'm out. Yeah, yeah I'm out, you know, so. Yeah. No, but, I, get, I completely get that. Yeah. That was literally my reason I didn't drink this weekend at my uh, sister's 30th. And it was the exact same thing. We just got so much going on in the business right now. And I was like, I just can't Need afford to, to be like cognitively yeah. like Impaired. not at 100%. Um, so yeah, no, I, I completely get that. I, I guess just that like a, extreme side of things, like is the parts of, so like I would say like I'm very meticulous with a lot of the things that I do, especially around training and nutrition, but I wouldn't say I'm at your level. I would still say like, I, like I eat ice cream every day. Um, but like it makes up maybe 10% of my calories or 5% of my calories. And yes, I've got a little bit more play than the most people because yeah. like I'm six foot three and yeah. kind of eat about 3000 calories a day and not lose, uh, not gain any weight. But do you, do you find like there's just certain pleasures or parts of life that you feel like you're missing out on or does it just so not align with who you are and your values anymore that it doesn't matter? Um, no, I mean, I do allow myself to have a couple of treats, you know mm. what I mean? Like last night we had a couple, I had a couple of Maltesers, my boyfriend had a bag of Maltesers and I had a couple like that's, that's, you know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't buy a, Pack it for myself. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you what's a real treat for me. And people are like, oh, fucking hell. Is that a treat for you? Like a matcha latte. Oh, like nice. something like that's milky. I would never have a, I won't have a drink that's milky because I'm like, no, it's just laden with cows that I just don't need. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So like, I mean, I'm so far gone in that mentality. Is that something honest. that you wish you could change? Do you wish you could relax around it a bit more and just like maybe more intuitively eat? No, honestly, I don't know. Because I think that gap's widening in big time and I just know I keep thinking if I stay the way I am now until I'm like 50 I'm gonna look fantastic and everyone around mm. everyone else around me I see it yeah. I've seen it with girls I went to uni where they were all skinnier than me in uni yeah. all super skinny and then I look on Facebook and they're all like married now and stuff and they're like twice the size yeah yeah whereas I was like twice the size then mm -hmm. and I've gone down yeah like they've gone the other way so you know and I think do you know why? Because for me, like, they just thought at that point they could never put on any weight. So they never had to learn those good habits. But because I had to learn those good habits, they've just entrenched in me now. Like, I don't even see it as, like, anything weird. Like, I just live my life the way I live it. Yeah, I think that's uh, something that a lot of people forget is, like, once you actually develop a really healthy foundation of habits yeah. and set your environment up for success, it's not like it's, like, I'm not thinking about food all the time or stressing about food or think I've got to do a workout tomorrow and or you know I'm just like I just I just, I just do it so a lot yeah. of it's autopilot at this point and um, my mental capacity and time is spent elsewhere because yeah. that that part of my life is just an autopilot I think that the difference a big difference between me and you here though is like when I first started getting into health and fitness I went down the mega clean mm -hmm. uh, all I ate was like plain chicken um you know like sweet potato and tuna with like nothing like i'd have to drink three glasses of water with sweet potato and tuna because <laughs> it was that dry right, oh. um i used to put like cinnamon and eggs and oats together and it was just like i'd like be balking eating it but i just didn't really? care yeah, I, I didn't care because i was like this is what it takes to get shredded this is what it takes to to be in amazing I'm shape 100 percent been there too yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it, uh, you know and and like i was like I used to take my own tea bags around to people's houses because I used to drink this uh, like herbal tea that had no caffeine in it and I loved <laughs> the hot drink. So that was it. I'd, I'd be the weirdo of taking my own tea bags into my friend's parents' house. Just I like, feel like I've probably yeah. done something similar. Yeah. Yeah. I bring my own food. I used to bring my own food. Like I'd go around to a friend's for dinner and I'd bring my own food. I was yeah. like that level obsessed. But I, I like that's where I was at and then yeah. it's, I've actually relaxed more over yeah. the years and I think that's yeah. just about building that confidence with myself. Like, oh, if I did eat an ice cream one night, I didn't instantly get fat the next day or yeah. I'm not like that hasn't hindered my performance. So that hasn't. So it's, 
you know, I think sometimes I get the perception, especially when if I meet anyone who follows us online or meet them in person, that I'm that person, the hyper healthy, never eats anything, <laughs> right. like, quote unquote, bad. And then I spend some time with them, I'm like, you're just eating a pizza and a this and a that. And it's like, and it kind of shocks them a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, but it, it's still the minority of the time. It's just like, exactly I, it's the majority is the other way i was in a yeah. pub a few weeks ago and i seen this guy that i hadn't seen for about five years i met him at the races and i, I was like at the bar and i'm ordering something i'm ordering food and he was going i hope that's like vegan and clean as you can get and i'm looking around i was like oh my god <laughs> like because i was thinking yeah, that, that sounds like me yeah <laughs> usually i'm buying something that's like vegan and everything anyway it wasn't it was like crispy chili beef um so yeah of course I, I relax a little bit like that but i would say 95 percent of the time mm. and places that i choose to go and eat yeah i uh, like completely picked because i know i can get something in there that's like that makes a real difference doesn't yeah. it if you especially if you've got friends that do want to meet out for dinner or out for drinks if you can at least have a choice of where yeah oh so yeah you're it sounds like you're always controlling the controllables to keep that side of things what happens when you are not able to control the control do you find yourself in many of those situations i mean it's different at the weekend so we've got danny's kids and stuff and they you know we, mm. we have time to play areas and stuff like that so it's again i'm just like at, at the will of these like places that sell chicken goujons and stuff like that so <laughs> it's well fancy we get yeah. chicken nuggets down my way. <laughs> <laughs> so um so I just either won't bother or, you know, um, but yeah, if I'm going around to someone's house, you mm. know, yeah, of course, I'll just have to eat whatever. Um, yeah, I'll relax it a little bit. But I remember when I had done that 12 week challenge in the gym. So after I'd got pregnant, I decided to do this 12 week challenge and I'd gone from 70 kilos down from 6 to 62 in 12 weeks. And well, I needed to hit 62 and I went round to Danny's auntie and uncles and they cooked this amazing sea bass, like amazing, like tomahawk steak. You should have seen it. Like they're so good at cooking. It was amazing. And I was like, I'm not having it. I'm fasting yeah. all day. And like, everyone's like, are you joking? I had a glass of red wine though. Cause I thought that'll dehydrate me <laughs> for tomorrow. <laughs> so like, cause I was like, I've got to see 62 on that scale. Otherwise I will not be like, life won't be left living for me. Do you know what I mean? I'll beat myself up because I'm, you know. So anyway, I got there the next day, 62. I was made up. I can get that in more in a challenge con concept. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like, you know, whatever, I'm very like that. Like whatever it takes to sort of win in that sense. Like I've debated sometimes. I heard uh, Jamie Carragher say this on a podcast and he basically said, I would rather cheat and win than lose you know what i mean and I, and I was just like don't tell me you agree no i'm i'm not like that but like i was about I, I, to lose all my respect no but i i like <laughs> like i can't sleep if i lose you know what i mean yeah like, i like i'm so competitive in the sense of like wanting to win um so yeah that's uh it's I, I i get that in like a challenge concept i it's it's just I, yeah I, I guess what i was just trying to ask and understand more is just like around that day-to-day -day side of things just because i know that's something that so much our clients yeah, struggle with really struggle with that head they want to have that 100 percent all the time with the diets with the training and then sometimes it's just not possible there's like crazy deadlines and work they're doing like a 14 hour day they get home the house is turned upside down yeah they, and you, you know, just, just want to so that used to happen to me of course it did i'm mm -hmm. a busy working mom it's funny that nobody ever calls danny a working dad um a working mom um so we like yeah i would have mm -hmm. days like that where i'm like i the last thing i want to do is cook now so i'll go on deliveroo and um i'll get the best of whatever delivery has got to offer you know what i mean so either a burrito and mm -hmm. it'll be as lean and clean as i can, I can pick from the option mm -hmm. so it'll be like no sauces no you know what i mean it'll just be chicken a veg basically in a wrap yeah done with rice fine or something like nando's you know what i mean so it'd be like chicken breast yeah. matcha peas and a corn on the cob but i think you that's know, really that's, key to yeah. share because when people think oh you just eat clean all the time they don't think of you having a nando's so i think people have in their head oh well, if you've got to look in shape or you want to look a certain way there's no nando's there's no pub dinners like there's no playtimes but there is, it's just making smart choices, right? Well, it's making good choices of whatever's on the menu. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that comes from knowing like the nutritional basics of what you need in a yeah. meal. Yeah. Like I take the baby to San Carlo sometimes. I'll get a, like a piece of salmon. She'll eat a whole piece of salmon and peas and broccoli. And I'm like, we, like we'll get the same thing basically. And I'm just like, I don't want it to like, 
given my hang ups about food, but I also, it really does wind me up when I see like my mom trying to give her an ice cream and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I'm like, she's a nine month old baby. If you give her that, I will literally throw it at you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, get that away from her. I was gonna ask you about Grace actually, like what's your ethos with her around food? Cause obviously you are very rigid with yourself because of the journey you've been on, but what do you want for her? Yeah, so she is like a growing, developing little baby. So I want to give her the best of the best of the best. You know what I mean? So um, it's like whole foods, clean, you know. She's what's what's off limits then? Um, and why? The only time I've given her like snacks and stuff is like, I have a few snacks for her in, uh, in the house. And then they were like really needed when I went flying, with, when, I, when I took her on holiday. So, you know, she needs to munch on something on the plane. So I was like, oh. Right, okay, so I'll get her a few snacks. But otherwise, I don't. She'll mm. sit there while I'm cooking for her and I give her an easy peeler, give her a satsuma. She'll eat all that, give her a banana. Like, you know, that's her, like, snacks until I'm, like, ready to give her, like, some sweet potato and fish or something. So she's really good. Um, eats broccoli like it's going out of fashion. <laughs> um, she has more supplements than most adults that I, than I know. She has vitamin D. She has DHA. She has pre and probiotics. Um and anything else I feel that she needs, she'll have, you know? So it's just creating those good habits. And I really wanted to expose her to the best of, you know, everything that I know, which is mm. you've got to see me working out. She's got to see me training and working out because that has got to become habitual. That's got to be, and then, well, that's what we do. We, in our family, we work out, you know, and that creates these good habits. Yeah, it's um, a big part, isn't it? Like yeah. monkey, monkey too, like they yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely, yeah. Um, follow with what they're saying. Exactly, so it's exposing her to the right stuff, you know? Um, because most habits, well, they're picked up from your parents. If you see like an overweight kid and then you look at like their parents, you know where it's come from and they've picked up those habits. Every baby is born, you know, the same. And it's just what the habits and behaviors they're exposed to is like shapes their environment and their life. And if their environment isn't set up for success or their environment is just like full of cookies and crisps and biscuits everywhere that they can just go and get and eat at will and Coke and whatever. Well, it's, it's not great. Is so it? how, like, I mean, and it's great that you're able to do that for your child and in, in your home and in your environment. But what about these uncontrollable environments where they might be in nursery or they might be in school or they might be at, I'm at, waiting for at this, friends' you know. parties, you know what I mean? Yeah, because it's like I gonna, worry about it. Yeah, they're going to come <laughs> home and there's going to be a full fat bottle of coke in the hand and you're like, what the hell is that? You know what I mean? <laughs> Poison is what yeah. I say. Poison, get it away, yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I've thought about this. Mm -hmm. I've thought about this. Um, and then I've, I'll be like the mum that all the other mums hate, you know, <laughs> because they'll all like bitch about me behind you know, I'm back probably. I actually said to Danny, we've just bought a new house. And I said, I want you to put a glass, um, like a piece of glass in this wall. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a pantry behind it oh, nice. with all like my protein powders, which are all mm -hmm. like different colors and stuff. And I said, and when Grace's friends come around, they'll be like, have you seen Grace's mum's pantry? <laughs> 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 I said, this is like a dream of mine. So I have all like my spirulina and my turmeric powders, you know, all colorful, but it's like, a display as well. So I was, <laughs> so he was like, God, we fucking want different things in life. <laughs> you, why why am? <laughs> because my husband wants that for wine. <laughs> <laughs> he would, yeah. Why Why do you think um, this level of, of health is so important to you? I know we spoke about your weight loss journey before and obviously some drivers around that, but you know, there's, there are these extremes around health to an extent and we, we can't get to that place where, you know, we try and optimize absolutely yeah. everything. And um, why is that like so important to yourself? Um, I think it's, well, one, definitely, you know, it's always a weight loss thing. That's always there. That's like the, the big elephant in the room. But then there's other things, you know, you look better, you feel better. I want my hair to be looking beautiful. I want my skin to be looking fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you want to be, you know, feeling sharp and bright and not feeling like shit, you know what I mean? Um, that all comes from great nutrition. It's got to, you've got, it's, it's foundation to everything, isn't it? You know, if you want to perform well in the gym, if you want to perform well in work, it's the absolute foundation to everything. You know, it's the driver of all your behavior. You're talking about hormonal health. That, mm -hmm. again, your nutrition has to be um, on point to have great hormonal health. 
Um, and again, that drives in your entire behavior. So it's it, it's like the crux of everything. And if you yeah, don't yeah. get that right, you know, you're going to find it such a struggle. I don't think truly people know how good you can feel. I think that's a massive yeah. barrier for a lot of people. And then when they see how many obstacles they have to overcome to get to that feeling good point, and they have no payoff, they have no idea why it would even be worth it. Yeah. Making that start so hard. Yeah. It's not just about the aesthetics and looking good in a yeah. bikini. The one of the things is now I don't need to diet to go on a holiday. I can mm -hmm. just go on holiday. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not one of those, oh God, I'm gonna be in a bikini, I need to lose some weight. I'm always at the same. I maintain how I look at all year round now. That is like a big thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I've got discipline, it allows me to have freedom in so many other areas of my life, you know? Yeah, yeah I, you know, there's a lot of stress around Christmas and yeah. dresses and parties and weddings and then holidays. So if you're just, it, I always just see it as, it, it's just a piece of the puzzle to solve. Mm -hmm. And it's a super important one because, you know, your nutrition and your health and your mental health and your physical health, they're, they're like, that's you, that's your home. That's the only thing that you actually own. And if you can get that into the best place possible and solve that that sort of problem, uh, and a lot of it's just a skill thing. Like yeah. Everything we're talking about here around nutrition is skill-based. You become so skilled at nutrition, eventually it just becomes easy like anything yeah. else. And then that benefits you literally till the day you die. Yeah. So it's such a... I think it's one of the best things that you can do, one of the best return on investments that you can get because it will impact every part of your life. A hundred percent. And I was watching like a little clip on Instagram this morning and it was like your physical fitness is like your calling card. You don't even need to say anything. You can walk in a room and people just know immediately, mm -hmm. you know, you have, haven't bought it. You have to earn that through like sacrifice, through discipline, through not allowing yourself to eat, you know, pizza and burgers and chips all day, through... <clears throat> Hard work, sacrifice, killing yourself in the gym, getting up, and when you feel I'm not motivated every day, of course I'm not, but I have to like have that discipline where no, no, I've made that appointment, I'm going. So, yeah. no, definitely, it's it's a huge state of symbol to, to show that you're in shape. It instantly says like so much about you in terms of yeah. your character and what you do on a on a habitual basis. Um, That's also why we find like people who are in shape attractive, right? It is yeah a visual demonstration of everything about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, visually to the eyes and then also like the, the character traits yeah. that that comes with as well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Wow, I think that has been a very <laughs> thorough chat on <laughs> values of nutrition. <laughs> um, it's been amazing to chat to you today. So you've got some really great stories to share. So thanks for coming in. Oh, thanks um, so much. And obviously you told us a bit about El Sarah, which sounds fabulous. So if anyone wants to find out more about it, where should they go and to find about more about you? Okay, so it's at elsarah.inc, I-N-C, like incorporated, um, on Instagram. And we have a podcast channel, which is also El Sarah. And uh, if you want to follow me, I'm at Miss, I'm this, this camera over here, yeah. I'm at Miss Alyssa C. Um, and yeah, yeah, be a, uh, it's been a great chat today. I really feel like you guys are super aligned with mm -hmm. what I talk about, what I do. I'm always talking about no bullshit approach to everything, which is like kind of your guys' whole ethos. Um, yeah, so it's been a great chat. Lovely. No, oh, amazing. Thank you Thanks for coming for on. Thanks for coming in. Hey, everyone. Thank you for listening. As always, we want this podcast to be the best of the best. So if you haven't gave us a review already, please scroll to the top or the bottom. Give us a review. Let us know what you think. And we'd love to hear from you.